Imagine millions of years ago. Our world was a playground for gigantic insects. Think dragonflies with wings as big as your arm. That was Earth during the age of giant insects. Fascinating, right? Today, we'll delve into this captivating chapter of our planet's history, when colossal insects roamed and dominated, and where the line between fact and fiction can blur. Our story begins in the late Paleozoic era during the Carboniferous period, which lasted from about 299 to 359 million years ago. Picture a whole different Earth. Instead of being covered with a concrete jungle like it is today, millions of years ago, our planet had dense forests with towering trees. Some of these ancient giants exceeded 100 feet in height, but they didn't have thick trunks of solid wood like we have today. These trees lacked true wood and had more primitive structures. And these ancient forests played a vital role in shaping the Earth's landscape. They stabilized soils, controlled erosion, and also had a significant influence on climate patterns. The plant life of the Paleozoic era also played a crucial role in transforming the planet's atmosphere by helping to increase oxygen levels. Not only were they picture perfect, but they also proved to be an excellent habitat for various gigantic insects. And by giant insects, we're talking about bugs that would put the tiny ones of today to immense shame. For instance, imagine dragonflies with wingspans of up to two feet. Shocking, right? The Meganeura, a huge dragonfly-like creature, was one of the most recognizable enormous insects of the period. With such a large wingspan, it may have been mistaken for a little bird. The sky was ruled by these flying behemoths, who preyed on smaller insects and even small vertebrates. But the Meganeura wasn't the only colossal bug that ruled the world. Massive millipedes prowled the forests, some measuring more than six feet in length. These ancient arthropods were herbivores that consumed decaying plant debris and played an important role in organic material recycling. And let's not forget the massive arachnids that roamed the Carboniferous woodlands. For example, Arthropleura was a giant millipede-like creature with a nasty visage. It could grow over six feet long and had a tough exoskeleton that protected it from various dangers. Unfortunately, paleontologists have yet to find a complete fossil of these giant arachnids. Moving on to the Pulmono scorpius, an ancient scorpion-like creature that roamed the Carboniferous landscapes. With its distinctively curved tail and menacing pincers, Pulmono scorpius was a formidable predator. It likely preyed on smaller invertebrates that shared its habitat. Speaking of scorpions, there is another guy that catches the eye. Megarachne, often called the giant sea scorpion. Its classification is still debated, but this aquatic arthropod possessed long and sharp appendages, which it likely used to capture prey in the ancient waters. And fossils suggest that giant cockroaches and dragonflies were the most common during the reign of the giant insects. But giant insects didn't exist in just the Carboniferous period. Take Meganeropsis permiana as an example, which was an impressive insect that lived during the Permian period, around 275 million years ago. It is believed to be a relative of the giant dragonfly, Meganeura, that we talked about earlier. With a wingspan estimated to be around 28 inches, it was one of the largest flying insects ever, showcasing the remarkable diversity of insects during prehistoric times. But how was their existence possible? During the Carboniferous era, the Earth's atmosphere differed from what we experience today. It had significantly higher levels of oxygen, reaching up to 35% compared to the current 21%. This abundance of oxygen was due to the proliferation of plant life, including vast forests of giant ferns and lycophytes. Additionally, the high oxygen levels contributed to the formation of extensive coal deposits, as the decomposition of organic matter was slow due to the lack of efficient decomposers. The unique atmospheric conditions of the Carboniferous era played a crucial role in shaping the Earth's ecology and geological features. The increased oxygen levels supported the growth of colossal insects and other arthropods, which thrived in this oxygen-rich environment. And the oxygen was enough to go through their tiny breathing tubes. You see, insects don't have lungs like us humans, but they use a series of tiny breathing tubes, or trachea, that are spread throughout their bodies. Air enters the insect's body through small openings called spiracles along its abdomen and thorax. From there, it travels through the trachea, branching out into smaller tubes called tracheoles, which reach every part of the insect's body. Oxygen diffuses across the thin walls of the tracheoles, 
It enters the cells while carbon dioxide, the waste product, diffuses out. This simple yet efficient respiration method enables insects to extract the oxygen they need for survival, even in their remarkable diversity of shapes and sizes. Also, the absence of predators like birds that would feast on them made their survival a bit easier. But they weren't always lucky, especially when it came to their encounters with early reptiles. These massive insects were not invincible, despite their enormous size. The conditions that permitted them to thrive throughout the Carboniferous period changed over time. Oxygen levels in the atmosphere began falling and new predators such as reptiles arose. These factors contributed to the enormous insect's decline and eventual extinction over time. On the other hand, the extinction of giant insects paved the way for the emergence of other intriguing animals such as dinosaurs, which dominated the Mesozoic Era. Speaking of the Mesozoic Era, also known as the Age of the Reptiles, was a period in Earth's history that spanned from approximately 66 to 252 million years ago. The Earth underwent enormous changes throughout the Mesozoic Era. At that time, dinosaurs dominated the Earth, and reptile evolution took center stage. These reptiles evolved into diverse species, ranging from huge, long-necked sauropods to fearsome predatory theropods like Tyrannosaurus rex. The emergence and spread of flowering plants or angiosperms also occurred during the Mesozoic era. This resulted in the evolution of varied ecosystems and new kinds of life. Other remarkable species that thrived during this period besides dinosaurs included pterosaurs, marine animals like ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs, and early mammals. The Mesozoic era is perhaps best known for its dramatic end, the extinction of the dinosaurs. This event, which occurred around 66 million years ago, is widely attributed to a massive asteroid impact, in conjunction with other environmental variables, which caused these once dominant species extinction. The Mesozoic era holds a fascinating place in our planet's history, and it changed the course of life on Earth, paving the way for the rise of mammals. Anyway, back to insects. As the globe evolved, smaller, more specialized insects appeared, filling ecological niches left vacant by the giant bugs. Believe it or not, these larger-than-life bugs actually were beneficial to the environment. They served a crucial part in the ecosystem. For example, the Meganeura insect mentioned earlier contributed to pollination. This guy was like a cute little bee doing its job, only 1,000 times bigger and much deadlier. Now moving on to how they handled their dead. No, we're not talking about burial, but their amazing nutrient cycling. Large insects like Arthropleura would decompose dead matter into nutrients and vital materials for plants to absorb and add fertility to the soil. The presence of these enormous creatures also served another purpose. Their abundance and absence indicated climate variations, habitat quality, and vegetation changes. Lastly, they were also responsible for seed dispersal. Insects like Titanomyrma used to eat tons of fruits and carry the seeds around parts of the land. This allowed for plant colonization and growth, diversity, and increased communities. Today, our atmosphere has an increasing amount of carbon dioxide. So, does that mean no more insects, or will they shrink even more in size? Well, it's unclear what effects the rising CO2 levels would have on the bugs' lives, but they won't be wiped out, that's for sure. So, what can we learn from Earth during the giant insect era? It reveals the remarkable diversity and adaptability of life across the years of their existence. It reminds us that our planet has undergone multiple shifts that have shaped the organisms that live on it now. As we investigate the ruins and history of our ancient world, we can't help but be curious about other wonders that lay beneath our feet, and of the other unique species that roamed the Earth in years past. And there you have it, folks, a glimpse into Earth at the time of giant insects. Can you imagine stepping outside and encountering a dragonfly the size of a seagull? It's truly mind-boggling how different our planet was millions of years ago and how it will continue to change in the future.